Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I wonder how many of you listening are introverts like me. And I wonder if being an introvert has intimidated you in growing your business, being forward facing and marketing your business. Well, if you can relate to any of those things, you're going to love today's episode with Tara Reed. We're going to talk all about how to market your business as an introvert. Tara and I both have the philosophy that you don't have to be on social media to grow your business. So we're going to touch on a lot of other marketing strategies that whether you're an introvert or not, you will be able to employ to grow your business. Without further ado, Tara, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you so much for having me. It is a joy to see you. I interviewed on your show quite a while back and we had such a great conversation then. So I'm really happy that we get to have a second conversation and this time inspire my listeners as well. Before yes, we I'm so excited for this. <laughs> yeah. Before we dive in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today? Yeah. So um, it's been a very long journey. I started my first business 17 years ago. Um, it was a handmade jewelry business, but I also had previous experience as um, learning SEO and website design. So I kind of used that to fuel my business. And then I started getting other people asking me for help with their business. And that's where I kind of moved into services and helping others and especially other introverts. Um, I think a lot of times as introverts, we feel like we have to show up in ways that we see other people doing and we try it and it's exhausting. And like, I got to the point where I was forcing myself to show up on reels. I was doing all these live videos. Like my energy was being drained every single day and it led to an eight month long period of burnout. So I really want to help, especially other introverts learn how to market their business in a way that really uses their strengths and how they get and use up their energy. Mm, I love it so much because you're right. When something doesn't feel good, when it's not aligned with you and your values, it drains you. And I think that's for me, it's not so much that I didn't like doing the reels or they were too hard to do, but I was drained after. And when you drain yourself doing things that don't feel good, you don't have energy left for those you love at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened to me. I was like, I was so exhausted. I got to the point where I said to myself, like, you're either going to quit this business. You're going to just let it go. Or you're going to figure out a way to make it work for you because um, this is not sustainable and this is not going to work for a long term. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about Tara, the how you started marketing your business once you decided not to use social media and to step away from what was causing you more angst than than joy. Yeah. So for me, I... There's so many ways to market your business. And I think so often we're just focused on social media. Like anytime I hear somebody talk about content creation, it's always social media content. And I'm like, there's so many other types of content. <laughs> like it's not just social media. Um, so I decided to leave social media and I went all in first on my email list. That is where I really wanted to build a community, share the most value and build my audience. And then I had to figure out, okay, how can I, you know, if I'm not going to use social media, how can I get people onto my email list? And so I really dug back into basically my beginning of SEO. So I focused really hard on getting organic traffic which as an introvert, I love because if you have somebody coming from Google, they're already searching for what you do or the kind of things that you talk about or the people that you help. So it's a lot higher quality traffic. Um, and then with SEO, I also focused on blogging and then also Pinterest and all of those methods kind of work together to bring people in to my website and then hopefully convert them and get them on my email list. 
Mm, yes, exactly. I am. I could just do like a whole cheer here <laughs> for that because there's so much power in SEO. And you said something that I think is key. And I know I've said it before on the show, but I really want to emphasize it. And that is that the majority of people go to social media to gather information, but when they go to Google, they are more likely ready to purchase. They're ready to buy. They know what they want. They recognize their need and they're ready to make that commitment. And if you rank on Google, it's, I think it's like 92% of people will click on and purchase from the top two ranked people or businesses on Google. So if you can work on your SEO strategy, you're going to have, I like to say more bang for your buck than spinning your wheels, doing something you're not necessarily comfortable with on social media. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of times when people hear SEO, they're like, oh, that's too hard, too complicated. It's going to take too long. And it does take longer than, you know, just posting on Instagram and getting like 30 likes. But what are those likes really doing for you? (laughs) Are they like, I know when I was really heavy on Instagram and like trying to force it and spending so much time on there, most of the people who were actually like consuming my content and engaging They were not actually going to my website, so they were never going to buy. They were not getting on my email list. And really, most of them were actually like competitors. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a couple things I want to emphasize there. One is that because our competitors do live on Instagram, there's so much more opportunity for comparison and imposter syndrome and self-doubt. And I think that's where, if you're experiencing any of those things as an introvert who, who has a hard time putting yourself out there to begin with, that makes it even harder because you're in this place of, am I doing it as good as they are? Well, if they've already got this business, am I going to be able to grow my business? And all of these questions flood your mind. And that doesn't help us move forward. It ends up holding us back and causing us to procrastinate or stay stagnant. But the other thing you said is uh, in regards to Google, you know, when you're creating content and putting that content on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, it you're at the mercy of the algorithms, whereas Google is set up so that they want to answer questions. That's their whole goal is to provide information. So more people are are likely to find you when you have an SEO strategy and Google can find you and understand what you do and who you serve and, and how you help them and that you're providing value. Yeah, I think what you said there about um, Instagram, especially for introverts that are in our heads a lot. <laughs> I know for mm-hmm. me, you know, the, the the really the big deciding factor for me to leave is it wasn't creating content for Instagram. Like I always love creating content. It was really just I was getting lost in the noise, just like I was spending so much time just scrolling and then looking at what other people were doing. And then I would get in my head and then it it really clouded my own vision for my business and like what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a good point because I think we tend to think that we need air quotes need to do what other people are doing. And even if it doesn't feel good, we'll step into that, but it's not effective because it's not aligned with us. And when we're working in a place of malalignment, we don't have the positive energy. We don't have the positive thoughts that are going to generate positive outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think another thing too, to think about with like social media, we get that instant gratification of those vanity likes. And I think when when we focus more on long-term methods like SEO and Pinterest, we almost feel we're like social media is so ingrained in us that it does feel like it's not working or like it's taking too long because we're so used to that instant gratification. But really, what is that instant gratification doing for you? Like, the lifespan of a social media post is basically a few hours, only a very small percentage of your followers will even see any posts that you make. And with something like ranking in Google or a blog post or even Pinterest, like 
it, yes, it does take longer, but it's long-term results. So, I mean, my most popular blog post is one that I did two years ago. Um, it's still driving hundreds of people every month to my website. And it, that's just the power of SEO and blog content versus, you know, yes, with social media, you post something and you get people, maybe some comments and likes, and it gives you that rush and you don't, you, you kind of miss that. I think when you do long-term strategies, but it's just something to keep in mind that, and ask yourself, like, what is that instant gratification really doing for me? <laughs> like, is it, is it actually getting me with the results that I want, like sales or email subscribers? Yes. And I think that is so important and we can get lost in those vanity metrics and we can look at the analytics on social media, but those numbers don't tell us how many people convert. So if people aren't converting, are you really spending your time wisely? And this is where, you know, I know when my clients come to me, that's one of the things I ask, well, are you getting clients from social media? Almost all of them say no. Their clients are coming from Google or from speaking engagements or other networking opportunities or, or word of mouth referrals, even more so than social media. So I think there's a lot to be said with that. And I, I will link in the show notes, everyone, another post that I did I don't remember if it was a podcast episode or just a blog I wrote, but I will link it because it it actually maps out the duration of content and how long it lasts. And it is there is such a dramatic difference between what happens with social media content and the content that you're putting on your website or even Pinterest. And you've mentioned Pinterest a couple of times, um, Tara, and I'm going to link some other show notes as well for a couple of episodes we did with Pinterest experts. And it is a long-term game. And so when you were talking about that instant gratification with likes or comments um, or shares, yeah, that feels really good, but that doesn't mean conversion. Whereas with Pinterest, your content sits there long-term and drives traffic to your website. And when that happens, because, because Pinterest is a search engine, that in, helps improve our overall rank on Google. So it, it's a win-win when you're creating content for a platform that is more of a search engine versus social engagement platform. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like I um, I was going through my stats because I, I kind of slacked off on Pinterest for probably four or five months um, earlier this year. And I went in to see and that slack off did not affect my results because it's kind of like what you do six months ago, that's what's going to affect you now. So I won't see the effect of that gap for another like six months after that, um, which is why I always hear from people with pin about Pinterest is like, you know, I'm, I'm posting consistently and nobody's even like, I'm not even getting any views and I'm like, well, how long have you been uh, sharing new content, new pins consistently? Oh, about a month. I'm like, yeah, you, you need to give it more than that. Um, and once it's kind of like a snowball effect, like once you start to see results, it's better to have slow and steady growth with these platforms like Pinterest and like um, ranking in Google search, because, you know, if you get a like, oh, it went viral, like that's not sustainable. That's like slow and steady growth is so much better than if you were to have like a social media post go viral um, that you know, 24 hour, 48 hour viral spike is going to fizzle out so quickly. Whereas with these other long-term methods, like it's slow and steady growth over a period of months and years, which as an introvert is so valuable. Like I always say with, you know, posting blog content on Pinterest, it's, I'm letting my expertise speak for me mm -hmm. um, versus like having to, a, a, I think a lot of introverts, especially with like social media, they're like, you know, I don't know how much of myself to share. And I think with blogging and then tying in Pinterest with the goal of getting people on your email list, where you can share the personal stuff, 
Um, I know for me, it just makes it feel, it, it makes it feel like a community. Like even though my email list is 10,000 right now, I still, I treat it like I'm emailing a friend and it mm-hmm. feels so much easier for me to do that and be like the real me versus a social media post where I'm like, I have no idea who's going to see this. <laughs> Well, you know, you said something too, and I think it's really important that we all have unique gifts and talents. And just because we're an introvert doesn't mean we aren't good at communicating or good at being present and building relationships. But there's something to be said when you are a good writer or enjoy writing and you want to continue continuously educate and communicate with your audience writing is such a great way to do it. And it, it's a creative process. So as we're creating the content, we're giving it an opportunity to live and breathe long-term versus putting it out there at the risk of it being wiped away at any given time, because an algorithm has shut down or erased you, (laughs) or Mm -hmm. a bot has, you know, hacked your account, all of those different things. Um, But that tapping into that creative process. And so many people say, well, I can't write. I, But if you have knowledge and you have expertise, you can write because it's just Mm -hmm. taking what's in your mind and putting it onto paper or on a screen if you're typing it. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that a lot about blogging is like, oh, I don't, I'm not the best writer. I'm like, well, you don't have to be like people aren't finding a blog post and like expecting it to be like a, like who is your audience? Like, what do they want to read? They're not going to want to read something that is like a, you know, college ex like paper that somebody's written. Like they, they just want to get answers to their questions that they're searching on Google. And you have so much knowledge inside of you that you can share that. And, you know, if it ties into your offers, whether it's a free offer or a paid offer, then that is the perfect call to action. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of times we get in our head with writing, like I have some blog posts that are, I I haven't gone back and like retweet them, but they're terrible. They're very short. They're like, I think actually a few of them were just, um, I just did the voice to text on my phone as I was like trying to fall asleep. I had this idea for a blog post and I just like talked it out and I just posted it as is. Um, Maybe I went in and did some SEO optimizing, but it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's like delivers and is valuable to your audience, which basically means that it answers a question or gives them some helpful information. That's, that's really all that it has to be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And something else, I think there's intimidation around blogging because people think it has to be this long piece of content and it doesn't. For Google to index it, it only needs to be 300 words. I recommend at least 600 words, but it's really not hard to write that much. That's like a long Instagram post. So if you take content that you had written for Instagram and you put it into a blog, it's going to have so much more weight and value, and you're not going to have to add to it because you can fit that much content in an Instagram post. So if you're used to doing long posts on Instagram, writing a blog post is no different and it's, it's Mm -hmm. no harder either. Um, so Tara, let's move away a little bit from the blogging piece and SEO piece. And let's talk about, um, let's talk about other ways you've marketed your business. I know you're a speaker. Um, are there other ways that you have marketed your business? Yeah, I think like along with the evergreen organic long-term strategies, I always say it's a good idea to have at least one like quick win, um, kind of method. Otherwise you will get discouraged. So for me, that's, um, speaking at virtual summits, that's podcast guesting, Um, And I've also participated in several bundles. Um, And really, that's just a way to get those quick wins and get an influx of new people onto my email list. Yeah, I love that. And it's a proven method because when you're delivering value and people see you as an expert, they immediately want to join your community because they respect you, they trust you, and they know that at the end of the day, you're going to be able to help them. So it's kind of a no brainer. 
per se, that when you mm-hmm. do these, these different activities and the key is they're free, they take very little time and they're a great way to reach a larger audience. Yeah, absolutely. I love doing collab events like that. And um, I've even started doing my own. I've done a couple of bundles and I host the introvertpreneur virtual summit every April. This, this upcoming April will be the fourth year. Um, and that's always a fun time. It's such a different experience to be the host and cause it's a lot of work, but it is, it is about that, like showcasing yourself as, as an expert and your knowledge. And I also, I just love curating and collaborating with other people too. So it's fun to host. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this, this conversation is a great um, example of personal branding also, because as a personal brand, we are controlling the perception that other people have of us. We're influencing what people are going to say about us when we're not in the room. And I think it's really fun when you showcase who you are. And just because you're an introvert doesn't mean anything negative. There are so many smart, brilliant, creative, funny, amazing introverts out there. We're two examples, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's, it's this opportunity to really be authentically who you are. And then you're going to connect with people that are like-minded that really appreciate the fact that you're showing up as who you are and that you're not trying to be somebody else because we're not all Mm -hmm. meant to be out there in this huge presence sort of way. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. I had, um, I always call it my like self-acceptance moment where I was, I think it was about the same time I decided to like go back into the methods that really worked for me and my personality and because I was doing reels, I was doing lives and I was not just doing them, but I was trying to be like this high energy extrovert. And I'm like, this is so awkward and not me. And that's probably the big reason why it was so energy draining and exhausting is because it was just, it, it made me feel icky, but, um, it wasn't until I was like, okay, this is not me. I'm just going to show up as the awkward, introvert that I am and people can take it or leave it. And I think we all need to to do that in our business, especially if we're growing a personal brand, like nobody wants you to be somebody that you're not like, that's going to come across. I think the biggest thing you can do is just show up as you are and be confident in that the, who you are is going to either attract or repel, um, people to you. Like I've always said, um, you know, there's some people who maybe come to me because they want to like do organic methods and evergreen products and all of this stuff, but I'm maybe not the best fit for them. If they want somebody who's like a cheerleader and like high energy, I'm like, that's not me. I'm not going to be that person. So it's kind of just a finding your people and you're not going to find your people unless you're showing up as you really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. And Oh, that is so key. What you just said too, about when we represent ourselves authentically and when we show up to educate and provide value and give information and educate and inspire and all of those things as our true selves, then people will accept us and trust us. But when we show up and like you said, it's this awkward situation when you're trying to be this fun boy of person on Instagram in a reel, when it's not really who you are, because then when they get on a discovery call with you and you're quiet, reserved, more serious person, they're going to be like, wait a minute, this isn't who I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And immediately that trust factor kind of tanks. So it's important. I think that when we're marketing, when we're building our personal brand, we choose what feels good, what feels right, what's aligned with our values and show up as our true authentic selves. Yeah. I think, I think a big piece of that too, especially for me is like also in your personal life. Like I, I know when I was growing up, like it was always, ingrained in me because I wasn't just introverted. I was also shy. Um, like you don't have to be shy to be an introvert, but I was, I have 
social anxiety. So I was, I was always really quiet and I always got people saying like, Oh, like, why don't you talk more? Like, why are you so quiet? And then I started to think of that as a negative that that's, this is something that I need to force myself to change. And it wasn't until through my business that I realized like, I just need to be who I am and just accept this. Like, this is just me. This is my personality. This is, you know, I'm, I'm awkward. I (laughs) I'm quiet. It's just, I mean, it's just me. I'm not going to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot to be said for self-acceptance because when we accept ourselves, other people are going to be more likely to accept us when we, and people can sense that. So I just encourage listeners, everyone to really do that self-discovery work and figure out, does this align with me or does it not align with me? Is this who I am or is it not who I am? Because the more you try to be someone you're not, and, and this is like a permission slip right here. Tara and I both are giving you permission to step into who you are authentically and be that person and represent yourself that way. Because I can assure you when you do that, your marketing efforts are going to be so much more fruitful. And it's going to feel so much easier. <laughs> like once I had that moment, everything just like in terms of my content and marketing, it just comes out so much easier because I'm not overthinking it. I'm not in my head about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought into the to the equation, Tara, that you were shy, you had social anxiety, and you're an introvert because we're both the same personality in, in that respect. Um, and people are often surprised that I'm an introvert because I can have conversations, but it's it's a matter of afterwards, or before and after. I am so emotionally drained. Like I'm talking myself into doing the thing or being in that environment or whatever it is. And then afterwards, I need a recovery period. And that's the big difference. But I think that when you have anxiety, social anxiety, in addition to being an introvert, it it makes it harder to really step into environments and situations. So that's where it's even more important to embrace the gifts that you have and who you are and just be exactly who God created you to be. Because when we try to be somebody else, it's never going to be effective. And it's only going to result in a lot of negative emotions and feelings of inadequacy or failure. And nobody wants to live that way. And when you're living Mm -hmm. that way, you don't believe in yourself and therefore nobody else is going to believe in you either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think a good thing too, is like, if anybody is listening and, and is an introvert with social anxiety, one thing I will say, and I, I try to talk about this a lot because I know it's not talked about. <laughs> um, we hear like, you have to push yourself outside your comfort zone all the time. Like great things don't happen in comfort zones. There's all these quotes, um, which I think is good advice. But if you are somebody who has social anxiety, like, I don't think you need to push yourself every day. Um, Like I push myself sometimes, like I just a couple, actually at the beginning of the month, I went to an in-person retreat that was outside my comfort zone. I really had to force myself to, you know, push myself to show up and be present there for the whole weekend. But if I had to like do something like that every weekend, that would not be sustainable. I would be back to burnout. So I think it's good to push yourself sometimes, but not every day, not every week, like good things can happen in comfort zones. Like that's when you are comfortable and most authentically yourself. Mm, I love that you emphasize that. Thank you. That's great. All right, Tara, we're coming to a close. Do you have any last words of advice? I think my biggest piece of advice is just think about who you are as a person. Think about your personality Um, what you're doing right now, how it feels, if, you know, maybe it is something that you could either scale back or let go of. Um, Like for me, when I left social media, I, I scaled back first for six months before making the final decision. Cause I know it it can be scary to, to say like, I'm, I'm going to ditch it. I'm going to move, like, I'm going to let this go. Um, So you don't have to, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing right away. Um, And just think about ways that you want to show up and that's going to be sustainable for you in the long term and help you achieve your business goals. 
Yes, I agree 100%. And if you do feel like you don't want to be out there and on your game all the time, writing is a great substitute. (laughs) So start that blog, start that blog and start implementing an SEO strategy. All right, Tara, thank you so much for being here. Where can the listeners connect with you? Um, so the best place is definitely uh, my website. So the terrorread.com. And if you go to my free resources page, I have a ton of resources. I have one for SEO specifically. I have one that is a webinar, um, the four marketing methods for introverts. So I cover um, Pinterest, blogging, email, and social media, but doing it in a less like socially kind of way. Um, and yeah, then you'll be on my email list. And that's really where I'm sharing the most value and all the fun stuff. That's awesome. And listeners, I want to encourage you to check out all of Tara's free resources. And remember, I also have an email or an email. I'm sorry. (laughs) I also have a video on an intro to SEO. So two great resources for you to really step into an SEO strategy simplified. I I think Tara is just like me and we try to simplify everything as much as possible. So you can always learn from more than one resource. So I encourage you to check out both because if you are really struggling with social media and want to grow your business without social media, SEO is such an incredible opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. All right, Tara, thank you so very much for being here. I am truly grateful. And listeners, if you enjoyed the episode, please be so kind to leave us a rating and review because that's how we get more incredible guests like Tara. And please share this episode with anyone that you know that might be an introvert or is frustrated with all of that, I guess, stress that social media can bring sometimes. All right. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. And we'll see you next time.